Hey, Karan, how are you? Good to see you. Hey, Rolf, how's it going, man? Great to see you as well. Going great. Uh, where are you all safe and sound? Very much so. Um, I've been in Bombay since the start of the lockdown, so it's been about right. five months. I haven't okay. left my house. Um, okay. Today, in fact, is the first day I'm going to be going to the studio outside after since okay. March. So, are you are you a bit nervous about it, or all prepared and all excited? Um, I'm not going to pretend like I'm not a little bit nervous, you know, right. because I've been taking extra precautions. I literally yeah. have not left my building apart from one shoot in the middle. So wow. it's been about five months. This is the first time I'm going beyond hundred meters of my house in five oh months. Oh my so. god. Fantastic. Uh, you know, um, but you make music, which is the biggest healer. And especially at a time like this, we all need good music. So please go to your studio and make some good music. Uh, you, you, you know, I want to take you back um, to a time when, say, you were working with Shankar Esan Loy and Pritam. You did some great work with them. Um, I just want to ask you, Karan, what was the biggest learning from that ex entire experience working with them? Oh, that's a great question. So I, I think I was very fortunate to um, work as a, before I started my career as an artist, you know, I was working with Shankar Esan Loy and Pritam. Yes. Now yes. the thing is Shankar Esan Loy taught me many things. Pritam taught me many things. Shankar Esan Loy okay. really taught me about Indian musicality while Pritam okay. taught me about, you know, the, how to make a song very, very commercially viable. Now okay. I'd say the best, the best story I can probably give about yeah. Shankar Esan Loy is this. So um, I'd obviously moved to India after not really having lived here, you know, oh, and yeah. I was entering the Bollywood industry and obviously the sound is different. The audience is different. And mm -hmm. I remember we were working on two states, um, right. two states. And yeah. there's a song in there, which is a Punjabi wedding song. So right. I got the vocal and I was trying to produce it. So I, we were at Yashraj at the time. And right. um, I started making this thing, which was, you know, like dubstep and really, really cool and different. And right. um, Suddenly, I get a knock on the door of the studio, and it's Loy from Shankar Asan Loy. Wow. And he goes, hey, man, what are you doing? So I was like, man, I'm trying to make this really cool, you know, wedding song. He's like, that's not how you do it. So I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, when it comes to a Punjabi wedding song, hmm. the only thing you have to make sure you, you make the audience do is they have to move like this. And he literally showed it to me. You know, the <laughs> six foot, God knows, whatever man goes, you got to be able to go one, two. <laughs> well, and he was like, if you can make them dance like that, then you're doing the right thing. And oh, that cool. was the yeah. biggest learning I learned from them. So, uh, and what about Pritam? Pritam, you said, taught you the commercial part of it, how to make a song saleable. Is that correct? Yeah, completely. And, you know, there's, there's, Pritam's a crazy guy. Like, <laughs> his, I'm sure everyone knows this, but I'll tell you yeah, the story yeah. as well on yeah. that. And this is really what Pritam taught me. Um, so we were working on Dilwale, which is uh, Shah Rukh Khan's film. Yes. And there's a song in there I produced called Manma Emotion Jage. Yeah. Now, the story behind that song, and essentially what he taught me was, one, how to work with a deadline and a crazy right. deadline at that. So wow. I remember I got called to the studio at night, late at night, and mm. um, I get a call saying, hey, Shah Rukh and Rohit Shetty want the song tonight, so <laughs> we have to finish it. So I got the vocal of the song, I right. think this was about two or three in the morning. They called me from right. my house. And um, I had the exact time of Shark and Rohit leaving from Red Chili's, which is in Bandra, coming <laughs> to Haiti, And right. I had to make the entire music in their car ride to the studio. Okay. So okay. the whole thing got made then. And that's something which, you know, they really, really taught me. Right. Wow. That is, uh, that's quite a different, you know, variation to learn one thing and to learn another thing. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you went on to doing your own thing as well. Um, are you prepared that in every interview and wherever you go, um, whether to a function or wherever, you will be asked about Tarifa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the thing, the thing with that is this, man. Um, I... There was many opportunities I'd gotten before, you know, with big production houses to make my debut as an artist. And yeah. I was very careful in saying no at the right times. And okay. I was patient to wait for a song like the Rifa to be my calling mm -hmm. card. Because yeah. the thing is, you know, while producing for so long, you're making music for other people. You know, yeah. you're yeah. trying to provide a service for their sound. But when right. I'm coming out as an artist to myself, I was like, you know, I want people to know my music and me by my sound so i waited for that right opportunity where i was given the freedom to really make music that you know i grew up with and music that mm. i would want to listen to myself right and right. tarifa was just that moment you know when it came wow. out 
I'm I'm extremely happy when people you yeah. always you know refer to that song when they talk yeah, about it yeah, yeah. because I'm so proud of that record. You know, I feel yeah. like it's something that took Indian music ahead. You know, it pushed yeah, the boundaries. Yeah, yeah. It's something right. that hadn't really come out, and for it to come out in such a mainstream commercial mm -hmm. fashion, you know, right. it's, it's just literally I couldn't ask for anything more. Right. What you know, when do you get to know when the song comes out? How how many days later, or just the next day, you get to know that this is it. This song is doing exceptionally well. Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, so the thing is, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Generally, you never know if a song is going to okay. do well. Okay. But okay. with the Rifa, I promise you, from the second I made it, I knew yeah. this song is going to do something different because it ticked all the right boxes. You it know, did. I learned yeah, how yeah, yeah. people react to this music. It ticked all the boxes. Again, you never know, though. You never yeah, know. Yeah. But I believe, um, I think a day after the release okay. of Tarifa, it, it's was all clear, it was clear <laughs> that it was it was something different. And then, Amazing. you know, there was moments down the line, like Sonam's wedding, you know, yeah, she yeah. was dancing to it. It was the vibe. It was the atmosphere that the song was creating. For me, yeah. the highlight had to be this, though. You know, I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. Yeah. And there was, there was a moment where... Um, I think it was Priyanka Chopra, Nick Jonas, and Sophie Turner, who plays yes. Sansa Stark in Game of Thrones. They're all on a boat. I think it was in uh, <laughs> somewhere. And you know, they're dancing media. to my song, and it just it made my day, man. Amazing. You know, just someone new who's uh, who's getting into this, how much time does it take to make a song like Tarifa from the start to the end? So um, it's, it's always different. It's always okay. different, but I'll okay. tell you the story of Tarifa. Mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting story. So. I remember I'd been I've been producing for a while and around that time I was actually going through a breakup. You know, I had a right. long-term relationship, okay. I was going through a breakup. And mm -hmm. um what happened was I met Rhea Kapoor. Me and Rhea were working on yeah. her fashion brand Reason, um right. Rhea and Sonim's fashion line. And right. right after that finish, you know, she liked my sound and she was like, Hey, I'm working on this film, Beer the Wedding, we need a promotional song for it. And you know, I was like, Oh, so what kind of thing do you want? And I gotta credit yeah. Rhea for this. She was like, you know what? make whatever comes naturally from you and yeah. those were literally the golden words for me because wow. i got to do you know what i wanted to so right. i went home and i tried to you know make stuff i didn't like any of it but right. what happened was i had to urgently fly from bombay to delhi um, okay. on some urgent business and on the flight i was texting my ex and you know how those texts go and uh -huh. eventually i ended up writing this long um essay and i was just reading it back before i hit send and a lot of the lines rhymed so I started just singing it and I was like, wait, this is something really cool. So I go yeah. into the airplane bathroom and I start humming uh, the lines on my phone. Wow. And I was like, wait, this is really cool. So I came out of the bathroom, everyone in the cabin is staring at me like I'm some crazy <laughs> person. But I knew for a fact that I had something special. Wow. So the whole song was composed like that. We came back, refined the lyrics, you know, wrote it more in Punjabi. Mm -hmm. And the song was produced very fast as well. Yeah. So, okay. So. Did, you, did you thank your ex for that? I did. I did. We're on very amicable, amicable terms at this point. Because, Amazing. You know, if it wasn't for <laughs> Great. So, you know, uh, I also want to ask you, what kind of music do you listen to? What do you like? You know, suppose you're by yourself. What would you tune in? That's, that's a great question, man. Um, so I grew up with a lot of R&B music. You know, I grew up right. mostly, with, uh, mostly with Western music. My mom mm -hmm. used to listen to a lot of Tony Braxton growing up. Wow. But the interesting thing, just tying back to Tarifa, is I got into music properly. Um, I used to take guitar classes. Mm -hmm. I was horrible at it. But I had right. a friend from Trinidad and Tobago uh, when I was okay. in Singapore who okay. got me into dance hall, you know, which right. was like Caribbean music. And right. that's actually what that was my entry into music. Now, okay. it's okay. interesting because, you know, everything comes full circle because Tarifa, mm -hmm. if you listen to it, it mm. is a dance hall record. It just so yeah. happens to be in Punjabi. So okay. yeah, I would say I listen to a lot of dance hall, a, a lot of hip hop, a lot of R and B, um, right. and yeah, that's basically my main influences. The, those are your influences. Anyone, anyone, anyone from here as well who you really look up to and you like their music, and you can put it at any time, morning or night. I mean, Ramon. You know, yes. the thing is, I didn't listen to a lot of. Um, Hindi music growing up, but mm -hmm. Ramon was a constant. I remember yeah. the first time I listened to Tal, you know, there's some, yeah. there's some oh my, God. my mind was blown because I was like, this is really different. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so Ramon is someone I really look up to. Musically, Vishal Bhadwaj is somebody yeah. who I think yeah. is incredibly underrated, even though right. he's massively respected. I just think he's yeah. got so much to offer. And right. his films are my favorite as well. So. 
Wow. Uh, also, you know, uh, your interview is going to also help a lot of people, young people who are trying to make good music. Um, is this a good time and an easy time also? You know, if people, everybody cannot come to Bombay, everybody can, doesn't know Shankar Esa and Law and people like that, can they make good music and just post it on YouTube or somewhere and just maybe if it's really good, it will get identified? So, I mean, definitely, see, it's, it's, it's no secret that the music industry during this pandemic has taken a hit. I yes. believe it's about 20% across the board. So yes. there's definitely there's definitely been a big issue. But I think, you know, with any crisis comes opportunity. Yes. And I think people can really look at it that way. And there's yeah. something that, you know, I've been doing to really, um, to really ease this process as well. I just started a contest recently for um, female yes. vocalists. It's called Karin's yes. Next Big Voice. And right. um, the whole purpose of this, you know, is in a time like this when, you know, opportunity is scarce. I really want to help people and give them an opportunity, you know, the way I've done with the Refa Reprise, but yes. I think it's so much more valuable now. When, so this you know, is the one you're doing with Big scarce. Bang Music? Is this the same one that you're doing, doing with Big Bang Music as well? That's the one. That's the one, okay. yeah. Um, right. But essentially what the contest was, was anyone can um, post a cover singing any one of my songs. Okay. And, um, you know, we had a voting round. And now we have the top four and we, we right. finalized it. The winner's going to wow. be announced tomorrow. And Fantastic. more than likely that person's going to be featured on a pretty big upcoming, upcoming song. Amazing. Will you be doing, you know, since you know how tough this industry can be, will you be doing a lot of this regularly? Would you like to do if you get the time? I would love to. You know, I mean, I think it all, it all comes down to Shankaras on Loy for me because I, I, I have no shame in saying this. If it wasn't for Shankaras on Loy, I might not have had a career in this industry, right. you know. Yeah, yeah. I was I came into Bombay working as a as a assistant engineer at a studio, Ooh. getting coffee, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I bumped into Shankar Saloy at a studio and they gave me an opportunity when nobody else did. And you yeah. know, it's just, you know, thank thanks to them, I you know, I feel like I am where I am right now. So I feel like they've really inspired me to pay that forward. And nothing mm -hmm. makes me happier than seeing somebody who, you know, has been struggling, has the right attitude, and eventually, you know, they have a career in this beautiful industry. So nothing makes me happier than that. Fantastic. And there are no losers. You know, the ones who uh, won't get the first prize will continue to make great music. Exactly. And, right. and the thing is, you know, there's not really a winner and a loser. There's exactly. a reason those people have, you know, been in the top four. I, I always, you know, I'm always here to offer a helping hand. I'm always That's here to, you know, oh, help nice. people in their journey. So. Right. Anything before we wrap this, anything do you want to tell them? What should they expect in the coming year, in next year, maybe? That so um, this year, in very shortly, there's there's a pretty big project, which I'm very excited about. I believe right. we're looking around um, probably early October. We're looking to okay. get it out. Okay. And okay. apart from that, there's a few more independent singles as well. Uh, it's, you know, I'm continuing to try and push the boundaries of Indian music with that. So I think there's a lot to look forward to. You know, there was, right. there was a bit of a gap in the middle because, you know, it's tough for us to shoot our videos. It was tough, tough to release music. But I think right. we're coming over that hump right now. And I'm really excited to get a bunch of stuff out. All right. Great, Karan. Uh, you go to your studio, head to your studio, be safe. And you have made us dance to your tunes. And we are more than happy for that. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Karan. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.